In a recent video discussing the best browser alternatives, one of those mentioned was the feature-packed Vivaldi browser. Many people asked if we could do a video going over its many features, so we'll do that coming up. Headquartered in Norway, Vivaldi's co-founder and CEO was the former CEO and co-founder of Opera back in the day when it was more cutting edge and had a larger market share than it does now. On desktop, it's available to download from their site for Windows, Mac, and Linux. It's also available from the app stores for both Android and iOS. When you open Vivaldi, their start page defaults to the speed dial. This is a good place to put websites you visit often to get to them more quickly. To bookmark any site to the speed dial here at the bottom, click on Add a Speed Dial. Then just add the address and the title for the site. Click on Add. To remove a site from the speed dial, click the minus icon in the upper right corner. And now it's gone. On their start page, you can quickly access your dashboard, which is a collection of widgets. You can add widgets by selecting Add a Widget at the bottom of the page. There's a dozen to choose from. In addition to the speed dial and dashboard, you can access your bookmarks, history, and notes. And if you're using their calendar and mail, you can access those here as well. A feature many don't realize Vivaldi has is the ability to block web trackers that collect data about your online activity. To enable it, select the drop-down menu in the upper left corner and select Settings. In the left pane, go to Privacy and Security. Scroll down. In Tracker and Ad Blocking, your choices are No Blocking, Block Trackers, and Block Trackers and Ads. So just select the one you want. Tab Stacking is a feature that lets you group multiple browser tabs into a single tab. It helps to keep your browser organized, especially when you have a lot of tabs open. To stack tabs, just drag related tabs over another tab, and then let go. And you'll see them below. To unstack them, right-click the tab stack and select Unstack Tabs. And they're back where they were. Tab tiling is a powerful feature that lets you view multiple tabs side by side in the same browser window. It's like a built-in split screen for web pages. To do this, go to the taskbar and click on the page tiling icon. Your choices here are tile vertically, tile horizontally, and tile to grid. Select one of them. I'll select another tab here and I'll do the same thing. You can make the tiles larger by going in between, left click and drag to the right or left. For computers with only one monitor, this can be great for productivity. To untile the tabs, select the page tiling icon and then select untile tabs. To be able to save tabs as a session to go back to later on is very useful. For example, when doing research for travel. To select the tabs you want to save, hold down Control or Shift and select the tabs. Right click on one of the tabs you selected and select Save Selected Tabs as Session. Give it a name, then select Save. I'll close these out now. To open that Save Session, go to the drop down menu, File, and select Open Save Session. Select it, then click Open. Tab thumbnails are visual previews of your open tabs that can help you to quickly identify content, especially when you have many tabs open. To enable this, go to the drop down menu and select Settings. In the left pane, select Tabs, scroll down to Tab Display, and enable Show Tab Thumbnails. To make the tab thumbnails bigger or smaller, left click and drag between the thumbnails and the address bar. A newer feature in Vivaldi is their free VPN from ProtonVPN, which is widely regarded as one of the best. To activate it, select VPN in the upper right corner. To use it, you will need a Vivaldi or ProtonVPN account. Then click on Connect. Unlike other VPNs built into most other browsers, this is a true VPN that hides your IP address and encrypts your traffic so other parties, like your ISP, can't see what you're doing online 
One downside with the free VPN on here is you can't select the country. It's selected for you, which is better than nothing. If you don't like the appearance of Vivaldi, good news, you can change it. Let's go back into settings. In appearance, you can switch between light mode and dark mode. And there's also auto, depending on the site. And in themes, there are various themes to choose from. I'm currently using dark. Let's switch it to beach. And that's quite a different look. If you don't like the themes being offered and want to see what else is available, click on get more themes. It'll take you to the Vivaldi themes page. There's a ton here you can choose from and you can view all popular themes. I'll go with dark elegance. Then select download theme. And now it's applied. I've switched to the default theme for Vivaldi. The left side panel comes in handy to quickly get to your bookmarks, downloads, history, and other stuff, including websites you can add to the side panel. I know in some regions, they prefer to have the side panel on the right side. To do this, go into settings. In the left pane, select panel, then select right side. I prefer left, so I'll switch it back. Staying in settings and going to keyboard, a great thing about Vivaldi for power users is that keyboard shortcuts can be assigned to whatever you want for just about anything that you can do in the browser. And there's additional categories down here. Got to click to open them. The screenshot tool is one of the features I use the most in Vivaldi. To take a screenshot, select the capture page icon just to the left of page tiling. Your output can be saved as a PNG, JPEG. You can have it copied to your clipboard or have it saved as a note in Vivaldi. We'll go with PNG. You could have it capture a full page or a selection. You would just need to drag the area you'd like to capture and then let go. Then click on capture. When it's done, it's automatically saved to your downloads folder. Reader view comes in handy to get rid of the images, ads, and other junk on a page to make an article easier to read. To the right of the address bar, select Reader View. You can change the settings for this. Click the settings icon here in the upper right. You can change the font type, font size, line and column spacing, and you can change the theme from the inherit theme to light or dark. A feature I use quite a bit on my laptop is reading list. I don't have it synced to my desktop computer, but I can still show you how to add articles to it to read later. In the side panel, second from the top, select reading list, and then click on the plus. At some future time, if I wanted to read this article, I would just click on it and it would open up. When you right click on anything in your reading list, you can mark it as read or remove it. And when it's marked as read, you'll see the eye icon here to the right. In the side panel, web panels are super handy to quickly open up a site. For example, with social media sites, YouTube, Reddit, etc. You can drag them to the left or the right if you want. To add a website you visit often to the web panel, right click anywhere on the page and select add page to web panel. And that's all there is to it. There are plenty of other features I'll let you discover on your own. If you need additional features, Chrome extensions can also be added to Vivaldi from the Chrome Web Store to enhance its functionality. To do that, go to the drop down menu in the upper left, hover your cursor down to tools and select extensions. Then here on the left, select Chrome Web Store. Because Vivaldi is built on the free and open source code base Chromium, of which Google is one of the contributors, most extensions you install on here should work in Vivaldi. Thanks for watching. If this video was useful for you, give it a thumbs up and share it with others. What are your favorite features of Vivaldi? Let us know in the comments. And if you're new to our channel, subscribe and hit the bell to not miss out on our latest videos and our useful website series and other tech-related stuff.